and welcome back to the woods day two installation we have all our parts laying down we have a hub we have all components for get this project done as you can see everything needs to be installed back with the new good parts we'll go and do the tensioner replace the AC compressor v-belt those components and we'll start putting radiators shrouds or like oil coolers everything what we removed and it started snowing a little bit but I hope it will stop let's get started it'll be interesting if you have any questions ask down in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel we're appreciated that and uh, yeah let's let's go oh boy okay let's get into this job AC compressor belt we need to get that guy and also put a new tensioner why not to do that so easy we can just jump inside the engine bay and do that job okay serpentine belt is good we're, we'll leave that that belt was recently replaced by the way okay loose upper uh, lock nut on an adjuster screw at the AC compressor lose the bo bottom bolts we need to do that make sure it can be moved and also the two bolts on both sides on the bottom of the bracket get those guys loose as well and just have enough slack to slide the belt out of the pulley pretty simple why not to do it when well, we're right there okay checked for the cracks and some splits on the belt and those belts are cheap just don't take a chance when you do repairs just and important part guys always assemble the clean parts do the clean up and that will pay back and especially when machine sits for a bit and all dirt can get in you don't want anything get on a belt and a pulley okay place the new belt we got that from Volvo they're not expensive but then you don't need to worry about the belt issue for some time and in most of the cases all the breakdowns and issues is a human error because uh, you don't watch don't maintain and you miss the point when you can prevent it anyway we'll make mistakes all right now we need to set up tension on a belt. I have my 70 mil, tie that bottom as well. And yep, pretty simple. You know how to do it. And uh, I'm really appreciated your time watching this video. And this is more uh, like a demonstration. And if that will help someone, that will be fantastic. Don't forget to tie those bottom ones. Okay, we're using the Allen key socket to take the tensioner off. Pretty simple. And yep, my half inch ratchet. And uh, there will be a video. I replaced the tensioner on another 140 AC, I think it was BF. And yeah, D4D diesel Volvo engine. And in that video, you can also check how to row the belt and all those interesting, important points. And water pump will be there as well. Okay, that not only bearing can go bad and have play, but also spring. And also have a video with this Volvo how to check the spring and bearing on the tensioner and do the tests. Okay, pull it out and only one bolt. Yeah, a little bit of rust. Again, we we'll always do the cleanup. Lots of CS rust and debris. Just make sure when you will put a new one, it will have the proper fit. Okay, there's a Volvo part. There's a part number. We got it from the local Volvo dealer. OEM part and supposed to be best quality you can get. And uh, and one thing. Before you 
start putting the parts back in their place always compare to the new one because we'll make some mistakes is shipping and receiving can be shipped the wrong part and just put them side by side and check make sure they're identical see those notches and there's a two and it's only one way you can put it and there is also square for the ratchet by the way on old style tensioners there's a quite different slot for the wrench it's not a square and I, you will see in another video i will check it down in the description how i tested this tensioner and all those interesting things will be there and uh, yeah volo excavators actually they have a great controls and the very nice machines to operate okay and i like to apply blue loctite thread sealant yeah the blue blue one that's enough and now we're placing our serpentine bell tensioner in a position how it was originally installed simple as that and yep it fits perfectly like a charm and started that bolt always by hand you don't want to cross thread it it'll just go and do two three four threads and then you can tie it with a ratchet simple as that here we go all right snag and uh, we're going to torque it make sure everything to the specs wow <laughs> leaves dirt pine cones all that nature is inside we need to do clean up before we'll start putting the radiators why not okay here we go radiator is assembled with a radiator shroud and i put a cardboard inside as you can see make sure it won't be accidentally damaged and we're using another small excavator to lift it up and put it back in place okay we'll speed it out of process The radiator is in, didn't take us long, and uh, now the part to bolt everything's down, and we have the oil cooler as well, aluminum, be careful with that, so easy to damage, and yeah, let's put that guy in, and it's pretty heavy, it looks like not, but it was a bit heavier part, and it has four mounting bolts as you remember when we were removing this cooler you need to align those bottom and upper bolts yeah you know take your time and uh, if something is not going right stop for a sec think about it if i can do it you can do it and this is a demonstration and i know it might help someone and why not to do it gopro it's such a helpful camera you don't need to even think about it and get things going okay i started my upper bolts i found there's an easier way to start it upper ones and then you slide it a bottom part of the cooler in and same way get bottom ones as well and it didn't go 
like easy first time but since you align everything it will be perfectly fine okay here we go that guy is installed now we have AC condenser to put in we just place it to the side and you don't need to disconnect the AC lines but it was a a little bit of puzzle to undo those uh, coolers but yep now it's time to put it back time to throw the rocks and go and pick them up okay <laughs> and uh, snow finally stopped and uh, it seems like we'll have the nice weather okay there's the bolts yeah four on each side just put them in and tie them up and that uh, I I found myself like it takes me longer to take everything apart and to put things parts all back together is way easier and faster because I know exactly how to do that. Yeah, those four bolts they're in, they're tight, and those ones are started. But I'm going to tie it. We still have quite a few things to put back, but it's coming. Keep watching. Very appreciated your time spending with me. Air cooler filter and yep four bolts as, as you can see i always put the balls back okay there is a support arms for the radiator assembly on each side now it's the time to put them back and see you need to do it now otherwise it might be hard to get same thing four bolts on the bottom start it then up align all holes and then we can go and tie them up and as you can see I don't tie the bolts until everything's aligned those are coolers keep everything slightly loose and then you can wiggle and have some flexibility and a little bit yourself give yourself some room and adjustment okay now we have the cooler lines oil cooler lines to the oil cooler and we, we plug them up make sure nothing will get in there's the caps now time to pull everything back and install yeah one for the bottom of the top okay let's wash it just a brake cleaner make sure those mating surfaces are clean and it won't leak and uh, this is quite a time passed by after we got everything's filled and now it's editing time and <laughs> already put probably a thousand hours after the everything was assembled fixed works no any leaks no coolant leaks no hydraulic leaks no any issues with the belts pumps and everything's in shape and in a working order it's a pleasure to see the good result good quality done okay and uh, there's a rubber o-ring just uh, pull that o-ring out and just carefully just get it with the pick don't try not to scratch anything just to pry pick that o-ring and we have a new ones saying came with the belts and bearings for the yeah I just pushed the inner rubber and uh, <laughs> okay here we go why not to put a new one this one didn't leak but we won't give a chance we'll just uh, put a new one they're very cheap as a few cents but then we know for sure we don't need even to think about it all right yeah if you like what are you doing that's probably best for you and um, What's the best? What's a great opportunity with the YouTube? We always can share and help each other to learn and fix things. And uh, I know someone will probably have some questions, but that's why we have a comment section. If you have any questions, please drop them down in the comment section below, and I will be glad to help you in a way much as I can. Okay, we have a new orange install and yep simple as that i found the best way to sort all fasteners just uh, keeping them in different containers and as i if i have the option i always put them back 
and uh, keep the parts like mostly together loose and that will save me time and uh, I don't need to look for which bolt came from which place and yeah that kind of saves quite a bit of time and uh, yeah oh, and clean that survey and a little bit oil still and not much yeah I expected that to come out and we don't want to spill I have my spill kit pad there and uh, yep get rest of the hydraulic oil and now I place my and there and now tie the bolts yeah and uh, I do bottom and yeah and <laughs> on the video is 35 minutes but it took me a uh, roughly I think uh, all together probably like four and a half hours to get everything put in place but videos are they're always <laughs> they're always short but this one is actually 35 minutes I tried to make it as short as possible but uh, yeah that's I think yep that's short enough yeah so yeah, I started one bolt on the bottom and on the top and that way yeah, that's the pressure will be applied evenly to the seal and let's go and start two more bolts yeah, any suggestions, advices or tell me if I'm doing something wrong I would like to hear that yeah, bottom one is done and the same way we're going to do the top. Yep, y you got it. All fine. Okay, now we're at the top. We need to put all those shields and plates and all those components were removed. All right, that saved the time a bit. And okay. all of those covers back. And yeah, there is also screens. You know that. Okay. Next. We still need to put the hub belt and yep. Remember the hub we assembled? We're using a red Loctite high strength on that bolt. And I put a video down in the description how to rebuild the hub, replace the bearings, and all that will be in the description. I also will put a card. Okay, there's our uh, pulley and left threaded bolt. That's how you do it, and uh, yeah. Some people say it's known issues on the walls; those bolts known to failed, and this one's well replacement. Yeah, it started by hand, just a uh, left turn. Okay, just I I I'm going all the way down, and then will tie it up see and I, I remember how original bolt was put in and uh, on an old pulley and uh, yeah you see the how far it goes and uh, yeah and then you go and use a impact you see it's not turning tied it up left thread Here we go. That's same way it was on an old pulley. How much will stick out? And now we're going to torque the bolt. Make sure it's all secured. Good. That way we know for sure it's all done right. Okay, we're cleaning this part where that new hub will sit there's a little bit of rust but let's clean up yeah oh the drug fall in I just wipe it spread a little bit break clean on the rack okay let's pull this cardboard from the shroud we don't need it 
See, I'm uh, start snowing a little bit. See, uh, <laughs> snowflakes are falling. Okay, we have our radiator cooling fan assembled with a tower. It's the time to put it inside the shroud. Apply the blue Loctite thread sealant to those fan hub bolts. Just right way to do it and um, yeah place the bolt in and there is on the hub is a hole on the bar on a on the on the housing you will see the hole it should face down yeah you will find that okay yeah and same way as we usually do we start everything tight by hand and uh, yeah I go preliminarily from one side to another and uh, yeah and then we will torque it I will speed it up Time for the build. All installed. Okay, we have our ratchet in a tensioner slot, and now we have enough slack to go over the fan hub pulley and slide it carefully over the pulley. And pay attention, make sure belt stays in the grooves on the bottom crankshaft harmonic balancer check that one and everything should go properly and now we have to pull that metal lock pin from the tensioner when we installed the tensioner tensioner was locked and now we're pulling it out and in the video down in the description you will see how to do the belt and properly install but belt as I said was replaced not a long time ago and belt is good we inspect it and yeah we'll we'll go for another few years yeah okay let's pull it out yeah as I said just look down and check make sure it's all good just use a vice groups Aba. yes Pull it out and now we have loaded tension on the belt. Everything's in place. Now we just need to put the right fan. And yeah, same way I'm just applying the blue thread sealant and yep, putting this guy back. And that will keep our excavator cool. Wanna overheat new fan? Yeah. Part number two how to do the fan hub bearings and fan hub well all together. Yep. Check it out. This is a part number three assembly. Almost at the back and I will speed it up now.
all good now we need to put that get that uh, low radiator hose on okay that's good and coolant uh, expansion reservoir same way pretty simple it's back all that uh, spacer diaphragm motor in between the engine bay and the radiator cap not a cap radiator small cover hood okay that's one's in and yep time to put a screen and you should check that screen regularly i would say they get clogged up and they cost excavators to overheat i know it's sometimes got neglected but check it once in a while every time you do the oil just look down and you will see if you rebuild up clean it up okay i connected all hoses upper radiator hose brand new replaced we had a cut in that and coolant temperature coolant level sensor will get in a guard for the radiator fan that guy is coming next only two 13 millimeter bolts on both sides and yeah assembly part is kind of my favorite because as soon as you got every single part if you did it you have that sequence in your mind in your head how to get everything in reverse okay connect your coolant level sensor okay and there's a bracket for it yes bolted that and we'll put that part hood now we're putting that engine bay hood and we're almost done almost done we need to tie all those bolts and yeah <laughs> in part one we're removing well everything but now we're just almost at the end ready to get machine started and checked how it will run okay see still need to put a coolant we're going to do it very soon keep watching very appreciated if you hit that subscribe button it will take you only a few seconds okay there is a glass or we we'll check in the level just uh, put a coolant and uh, also we need to leave the cap open and bleed the air if someone probably some still in the radiator okay we'll put more okay my level is going up it's going to start showing up on a glass yeah watch that level it might go slightly down and uh, yep top it up make sure you have the coolant and uh, yeah bleed the air after all that machine to warm up and keep a cap open for now don't forget about the belly doors those i'm going to tie those bolts right now make sure nothing will get accidentally open a lot of good stuff it's all in the video you already know and uh, we still need to bleed the air as i said and let's go fire it up i will set my gopro camera okay, let's turn the key on to the on position wait a few seconds as a buzz glow plugs are off okay Let's go see. 